Yes, guys. Turn to question number 15. The summarized balance sheet of Angle Bolt <coughs> and Canopy as on 31st December 2011 is as under. If you observe the reserves, we have reserve and PL, two reserves there. And come down to your investments. On the asset side, I have three investments Angle in Bolt, Angle in Canopy, and Bolt in Canopy. In short, we can call these companies are A, B, C. A is Angle, B is Bolt, Canopy is C. So A holds shares in B, A holds shares in C. Same time, even B holds shares in C. So again, a chain holding problem which is coming up. Now, check the intercompany owings. Angle Limited on the liability side, check in Bolt and Canopy's balance sheet, 180000 So that means on the asset side of Angle, we have to find these amounts. On the asset side of Angle, we have Bolt 120 and Canopy 80,000. 80,000 and 80,000 get cancelled, but I have 1 lakh in Bolt and 1 lakh 20 on the asset side for Bolt. So I'll get 20,000 rupees as cash in transit. Continue. All the shares were acquired on 1st July 2010. Guys, if you observe the balance sheet date is 31st December 2011. That means one and a half year after the date of acquisition. On 1st Jan 2010, the following were the balances. There's a reserve balance which is given to you. PNL balance which is also given to you. And profits of 2010 evenly earned throughout the year is given to you. So that is 2010 profits. 2011 profits are not given. We don't need it also. Because automatically that will become a balancing figure. Each company declared at a dividend of 10% in the year 2011 on the share out of the profits of the year 2010. Guys, 2011 is paying dividend for 2010. So such a dividend for 2010, not the entire thing is post acquisition dividend, nor it is pre acquisition dividend. Your date of acquisition is 1st July. So half is pre acquisition, half is post acquisition dividends. Angle and Bold have credited the PNL with the amount of dividend receipt. So pre acquisition dividend wrongly credited to PNL to the extent of the, those six months. The increase in the reserves of Angle, Bolt, and Canopy were affected in the year 2010. So reserves whatever is increasing, that increase in reserve is only during 2010. That means during 2011 there is no appropriation to reserve at all. All the bills payable of Canopy Limited balance sheet are accepted in favor of Bolt. Out of which 30,000 were endorsed by Bolt in favor of Angle. Guys, you endorse it again in the favor of a group company. Entirely again there are those bills payable are in the group only. So entire bills payable can be cancelled. Check the bills payable of canopy. Bills payable of canopy is 50,000. Out of 50,000, 30,000 is endorsed to angle. So 30,000 is held as bills receivable in angle. 20,000 is held as bills receivable in bolt. Anyways, when you combine all the three balance sheets, we will get bills receivable to 50,000 and bills payable 50,000 which will get cancelled. Unrealized profit is there. Stock of bolt limited includes purchases from angle. Purchases from angle means it is a downstream transaction. So the holding company is selling to one of its subsidiary for 18,000. 18, the goods are invoiced at cost plus 20%. If it is one fifth on cost, it is one sixth on invoice price. So that's it. Let's start the consolidated balance sheet. To prepare the consolidated balance sheet, we need several working notes. Let's start placing those working notes appropriately. Wherever you don't have to do analysis of profits, do not try to waste another working note. So as far as the reserve is concerned, I do not want to waste. I will only do for the PN. Start with your date of acquisition. Date of acquisition is 1st July 2010. My shareholding pattern Number of shares held and percentage holding First in the direct subsidiary that is Bolt In Bolt Angle has some shares as well as the balance are held by minority.
check how many shares angle holds in the investments bold limited 7500 shares how many shares are there with bold it is 10 lakh share capital each share of 100 rupees so this should be 10,000 the total is 10,000 so minority holds 2,500 my percentage holdings are 75% and 25% similar way in the indirect subsidiary in canopy angle limited holds some shares Boat Limited also holds some shares. Balance should be held by minority. Check the number of shares. Angle holds 1000. Bolt holds 3500. 1000 held by angle. 3500 held by bolt. Total number of shares. Share capital is 6 lakhs. Divide into shares of 100 rupees each. So number of shares is 6000. So minority holds 1500. First case it is 1 by 6. Second case it is 7 by 12. And the third case is 1 by 4. 1 by 4 or directly I can write it as 25 percent. Anything is fine. Write it as 25 or 1 by 4 I don't mind. Slight irritation happens guys when you start distributing the profits because of this ratios. 75 to 25 is much plain ratio. But this is something which we need to really consider it on. Don't try to take percentages unnecessary. 7 by 12 you won't get a proper percentage only. Start with your analysis. Analysis of reserves of subsidiary S, whatever subsidiary it may be, with respect to date of acquisition, that is 1-7-2010. Guys, first thing, there is no point checking your reserve because... He is saying whatever addition to reserve happened, the point number D holds, the increase in the reserves for angle, bolt and canopy were affected in the year 2010. That means there is no appropriation in the year 2011. 2010 is his date of acquisition. His acquisition is on 1st July. So half of 2010 appropriation is pre-acquisition. Balance half is post-acquisition. Check to the reserves. <coughs> Balance sheet reserve of canopy is 75,000. Come to the balances on 1st Jan. 1st Jan balance is 50,000. So that means appropriation in 2010 is 25,000. 12,500 is pre, 12,500 is post. So total pre-acquisition should be this 50 plus 12,500, 62,500 pre-acquisition, 12,500 post-acquisition. Similarly for bold, 1,25,000 is the balance sheet figure of reserve. The reserve balance in bold limited is 1 lakh as on 1st Jan 2010. So appropriation in 2010 is again 25,000, 12,500 pre-acquisition, 12,500 post-acquisition. So the total pre is this 1 lakh plus 12,500, 1 lakh 12,500, post-acquisition is 12,500. For this do not waste analysis. Directly we can put it into a distribution table. One thing which we have to compulsorily analyze is your PL. So let's start. Compulsory with the first one is indirect subsidiary canopy limited. Start with his PNL. Balances on 31st December 2011. That is your balance sheet date. My balance sheet date canopy limited's PNL balances. 2,50,000. Check what is the balance as on 1st Jan 2010. PNL of Canopy Limited had 30,000. What is the profit for the year 2010? 1 lakh. Be careful guys when you are doing this. 
I'll add three columns now. Because I'm starting with balance as on 1st Jan 2010, which is 30,000. I have two years, 2010 and 2011. This is profit of 2010 and last one should be profit of 2011. 2010 profit is given to you as 1 lakh. So 1 lakh 30 profit of 2011 should be 1 lakh 20. Absolutely wrong. Because there is an adjustment. Since there is an adjustment you can't take this. You can't take the balancing figure already. Just relax. Because out of this 1 lakh whatever net profit you have earned. Point number C. Each company declared 10% dividend in the year 2011 out of its share of profits from 2010. Guys, should I first divide between 6 months or should I first deduct? Should I deduct the dividend and then divide or should I first divide and then deduct? Dividend is for full year. Full year I am paying the dividend. So first deduct it, then we will divide it. So how much is the dividend declared? 10%. So, if 10% of the dividend on Bolt Limited's share capital of, sorry, Canopy Limited share capital of 6 lakhs. So, here I will get dividend of 2010, 60,000. Balance will be 40,000. This 40,000 I'll have to divide it again into two parts. One is up to the date of acquisition, 1st July. Second one is from 1st July up to 31st December. Half of 20,000, 20,000. Guys, obviously, I think you can calculate profit of 2011. 30,000 opening balance. 40,000 profit of 2010. Total 70. What is the closing balance? 1, 2 lakh 50. So, profit of 2011 is 1 lakh 80. 1 lakh 80,000 should be the balancing figure. So, pre acquisition is this 30 plus 20, 50,000. 50 is total pre-acquisition. This 180 plus 2 on 20,000. This 2 lakhs is post-acquisition. Similarly, let's do for can Bold Limited. Careful with the PNL part, guys. We have to compulsorily deduct the dividend first because out of the profits I am paying dividend and then I am splitting it in two parts up to 30 up to 1st July that is the date of acquisition and after 31st July. Check for Bolt. Bolt's PNL is 2,75. Out of 275, the opening balance as on 1st Jan 2010 is negative 50. My balance as on 1-1-2010 minus 50,000. So my profit of 2010, how much is the profit of 2010? 2010 profit is 2,50,000 given to you. So this should be, profit of 2011 should be, can I calculate? 
still adjustment. Dividend adjustment is there. First 10% dividend adjustment give that. The 10% dividend adjustment Ten percent of one lakh, ten lakhs. Dividend of two thousand ten, ten percent is one lakh. This is one lakh fifty, then profit of two thousand eleven is one lakh seventy five thousand. I still have an adjustment. I'm still not happy with the adjustment. I'll split it into two parts first. Up to 1st Jan, sorry, 1st July, and from 1st July to 31st December. This I'm calling it as 75,000 and 75,000. I still have an adjustment. The adjustment which I have to consider is dividend received from Canopy. Check. The entire dividend received from Canopy Limited was directly put into my PNL account. So this PNL, whatever he has given to you, two lakh fifty thousand, this includes a portion of dividend. What dividend? Out of this sixty thousand dividend, my share is seven by twelve. Seven by twelve in the sense, thirty five thousand dividend will be received by Canopy Limited now. Sorry, Bold Limited now. Now uh, out of the thirty five thousand, is it correct for me to take it to PNL to the extent of half? Because my date of acquisition is on 1st July. So up to 1st July is pre-acquisition. After 1st July is post-acquisition. So what you have added for this 75 is absolutely right. But what I have added to this 75,000, this is wrong. Because this is up to 1st July. Up to 1st July, whatever dividend you receive, we'll call it as pre-acquisition dividend reduced from the cost of investment. You can't put it into the P&L. So I'll adjust it here. Pre-acquisition dividend from C. Canopy's pre-acquisition dividend. How much will you get? Be careful, guys. Sixty thousand is the total dividend paid. Your share is seven by twelve. Out of this half, seventeen thousand five. Or this will be fifty-seven thousand five hundred. This is post acquisition. 75 plus 175. This is 2 lakh 50. This negative 50 plus positive 57. This two you combine. I'll get 7,500. Fifty thousand P acquisition, two lakh post acquisition, total two lakh fifty. Correct. Seven thousand five hundred pre acquisition, two lakh fifty thousand post acquisition. Total is two fifty seven five hundred. The balance is not tallying. No problem. It is nothing but the pre acquisition dividend which was wrongly created to PNL. Pre acquisition dividend wrongly created to PNL should have been pulled off from the PNL account. So the same thing you have done. Once we have these figures, we can go for Distribution table. What is my step four? Distribution of reserves. Pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. Under post-acquisition, two columns, reserve and PL. First, let's distribute for canopy. Unit take even the reserve into account. Reserve. Reserve balance as on 31st, sorry, 1st January 2010 is 50,000. <clears throat> reserve at the end of the <clears throat> 2011 is 75. Appropriation is 25,000 during the year 2010. No appropriation for 2011. 
So whatever appropriated in 2010, half is pre, half is post. So out of 25,000, 12,500 is pre, 50,000 already existing plus 12,500. So when we write reserve, 62,500 is pre and 12,500 is post. PNL, so much of thinking is not required. You can directly copy and paste. 50,000 is pre acquisition for canopy and post acquisition PNL is 2 lakhs. One lakh twelve thousand five hundred, twelve thousand five hundred, and then two lakhs. Held by angle one by six bolt seven by twelve. Minority 1 by 4, 1 by 6, 18,750 is angle. <coughs> That should be a distribution table, guys. Let's distribute it for bolt. Along with reserve and PNL, I need to also take bolt limited share in post acquisition reserves of. Canopy Reserve Balance as in first Jan Reserve is 1 lakh Appropriation Check your balance sheet 1 lakh 25 So appropriation in 2010 is 25,000 Half is pre Half is post or Reserve 1 lakh plus 12,500 1 lakh 12,500 12,500 is your post acquisition reserve PNL we already have the figures. PNL seven thousand five hundred is pre acquisition and two lakh fifty thousand is post acquisition. Share in post acquisition reserves seven two nine two and one lakh sixteen thousand six sixty seven. So this will be two lakhs twenty thousand or one lakh twenty thousand. This is nineteen thousand seven ninety two, three lakh sixty six thousand six sixty seven. Split between angle and minority. Angle share seventy five percent, minority share twenty five percent. First one is
Check the distributions guys once. I hope they are right. Yes guys, the figures are right. Start with the working notes. You have pre-acquisition dividend, don't forget that. Six months dividend of whatever you received in 2011 for 2010 year. That should be taken as pre-acquisition. So you can start with your cost of control. I'll need three cost of controls. Angle in bolt. Angle in canopy. Bolt in canopy. Start with your cost of investment. Cost of investment, check your asset side. 9 lakhs, 1 lakh 50, 5 lakh 20. 9 lakhs, 1 lakh 50, 5 lakhs 20. Deduct the amount of pre acquisition dividend from this. How much did Bold Limited declare dividend? 10% of its share capital. So, or directly I can check like this. Both are declaring 10% dividend. 7,500 shares. Each share is 100 rupees. 10% dividend. So 75,000. Out of 75,000, half is pre acquisition because its date of acquisition is on 1st July. So this should be taken as 37,500. Canopy. Canop angle in canopy, 1000 shares. Each share of 100 rupees. Dividend being 10%. So the total dividend he will receive is 10,000. Half is pre acquisition. 5,000. Bolt, 3,500 shares, each share 100 rupees, 10% dividend. So I'll get 35,000 dividend. Out of 35,000 dividend, 17,500. Half of it will be treated as pre-acquisition. 
Once we have got the pre-acquisitions dividend, you can total this. This will be 8 lakhs 62,500, 1 lakhs 45,000, and this will be 5 lakh 2,500. Compare this with share in net assets. Net assets are represented by share capital and pre-acquisition reserve. Each share is 100 rupees. Go on. Angle in bold. 7,500 shares. Each share of 100 rupees. 7,50,000. Angle in canopy. 1,000 shares. 100 rupees each. 1 lakh. Bold. 3,500 shares. 100 rupees each. 3,50,000. Pre-acquisition dividend. Angle in bold. 90,000. Angle in canopy, 18,750 and bolt in canopy, First case goodwill 22,500. Second case also goodwill. It is 26,250. Third case also goodwill 86,875. Total is one lakh thirty five. Let's go for the next working note minority interest, two minority interests in bolt and in canopy. Their share in net assets represented in the form of share capital and reserves. Reserves again pre-acquisition reserve and post-acquisition reserves. Post-acquisition reserve again I have a reserve and I have a PNL. And this will be giving me my total minority. Share capital, go on. Share capital, number of shares held in Bolt is 2,500. Each share being 100 rupees. So, 2,50,000. In Canopy, 1,500 shares. Each 100 rupees. 1,50,000. In Bolt, Bolt minority interest reserves are... Copy base 30,000 pre acquisition 4948 post acquisition reserve 91667 PL canopy 28125 3125 50,000 this is 2,31,250 and bolt is 
थ्री लैख सेवेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड सिक्स वन फाइव टोटल ऑफ दिस टर्म इज सिक्स लैक्स सिक्स थाउजेंड सेवन थाउजेंड एट सिक्सटी फाइव last working note guys results for cbs i have two reserves maintain those two columns one is a reserve and the other one is pnl i will start with angle limited balances balance in angle limited reserve 2 lakhs pnl 5 lakhs add their share in post acquisition reserves share in post acquisition reserves of subsidiaries bolt and canopy bolt limited share in post acquisition reserves are 14 844 Two lakh seventy-five thousand. Share in Canopy Limited is two zero eight three thirty-three thousand three seventy-five. Sorry, three thirty-three. First adjustment should be regarding your pre-acquisition dividend wrongly credited to P&L. Pre-acquisition dividend. wrongly credited to pnl both companies i got bolt and canopy both have taken wrongly to pnl i don't have to calculate again guys because we already used those figures in cost of control check angle in bolt 37500 angle in canopy 5000 it was wrongly taken to pnl so you deduct this to Thirty-seven thousand five hundred and five thousand. One last adjustment: unrealized profit. Unrealized profit on stock. Check. stock with bold limited included goods purchased for with angle for 18000 angle limited added 20% over cost 20% over cost 1/5th of cost is 1/6th on selling price 1/6th on the selling price of 18000 negative 3000 that's it guys story ends there This is two lakh sixteen thousand nine twenty-seven. This one is minus forty-two, minus forty-five hundred. This is seven lakhs sixty-two thousand. 
833 we have cost of control we have minority interest we have reserves for cbs and directly go for balance sheet Consolidated balance sheet of angle limited as on 31st December 2011. Started equity and liabilities shareholder funds under shareholder funds share capital Under share capital, equity share capital. The total equity share capital of angle is 15 lakhs. Next come to reserves and surplus. Under reserves and surplus, I have, I don't have a capital reserve, so only I have reserve and PL. Reserve total is 2,16,927. PNL total is 7,62,833. Then I have minority interest. That is your step 6 total. 
607865 non current liabilities are nil only current liabilities existing under current liabilities i have only creditors bills payable got cancel guys intercompany balances get cancel so your creditors total is 550000 that is a balance sheet total for the liability side assets non current assets under non current assets tangible fixed assets under tangible fixed asset the first one is plant and machinery plant and machinery 4 lakhs plus 2 lakh 50 plus 3 lakh 25 9 lakh 75000 furniture and fittings 2 lakh 1 lakh 50 and 1 lakh 40 that total will be 4 lakhs 90 intangible asset only one intangible asset that is goodwill already goodwill existing in the balance sheet is 2 lakh 50 4 lakh 50 and 5 lakh 80 so that will be 12 lakh 80 plus the goodwill what we got now is 1 lakh 35625 so the total should be 14 lakh 15625 total goodwill investments everything will get cancel directly go for current assets my first current asset which i see there is stock cancelled unrealized profit of 3000 So your stock is one lakh plus one lakh fifty plus one lakh sixty. The total is four lakh ten. Four lakh ten minus three thousand. Stock is four lakh seven thousand. No cancellation from debtors. Two lakh eighty. bills receivable will cancel 50000 so still balance is remaining bills receivable is 20000 balance two more current assets guys one is cash and one is cash in transit cash 30000 10000 in each and then cash in transit the difference in intercompany owings 20000 rupees a total there should give you the balance sheet total check the balance sheet total guys balance sheet total should be correct
And start the 16 then. Guys, we will not be having any new adjustment as such. So, there is the same adjustment, but we will see a combination of different adjustments in each problem. So, what we are going to do from here is more of a practice sessions. But, towards, uh, you know, after 4 or 5 problems, we have to say, we have to look into one more topic, that is multiple dates of acquisition. So, I'll tell then continue. 16, summarize balance sheet of 3 companies, Sun, Moon and Light. As on 31st March is given below. Uh, 3 companies, Sun, Moon and Light. Come to the reserves, liability side, reserves and surplus are reserves and PNL account. On the asset side, I have sun and moon, sun and light, and also moon and light. So again, a chain holding problem with light being the indirect subsidiary, even sun holding shares and light. Come to the intercompany owings, let's try to cancel them. Intercompany owings, sun limited in moon and light are 10,000 and 8,000. Check on the asset sign. Due from moon, 12,000. I can cancel to the extent of 10,000. 2,000 is cash in transit. 8,000 completely cancelled. Sun holds 8,000 shares in moon. 1,800 shares in light. And moon holds 33,600 shares in light. All the investments are made on 1st July 2011. The balance on 1st July 2011 of reserves and PNL is given to you. Moon limited invoice goods to sun. Guys, it is an upstream transaction. One of the subsidiaries selling goods to holding company. At 4,000 at cost plus 25%. And the closing stock included such goods valued at 5,000. That means how much is the profit? 4,000 good included at 5,000. Profit is 1,000. Light, so light sold to moon. Light is another subsidiary selling to Moon. One more subsidiary is selling it. Equipment costing 24,000 at a profit of 25% on the selling price on 1st Jan 2011. Depreciation at the rate of 10% is to be provided. So unrealized profit whenever we have to calculate for equipment. Equipment is nothing but a depre depreciable fixed asset. For any depreciable fixed asset when we are calculating unrealized profit it is profit minus depreciation. When did he sell? 1st Jan 2011. What is the balance sheet date? Guys, that is 1st Jan 2012, guys. 2012. Because he did not hold the investments on 1st Jan 2011. So, make it as 12. So, 1st Jan 2012, if he is selling it, how many months? 3 months. 1st Jan to 31st March. So, exact 3 months depreciation should be considered. Let's start. Take your cost of acquisition. There's one more last adjustment regarding Sun Limited's proposed dividend. Sun Limited's proposed dividend is the last adjustment. So let's start, guys. Start with your date of acquisition. Start with your share holding patterns. Analyze. You can skip the analysis of reserves. Directly, you can analyze only PNL. Number of shares I'll and percentage holding start with moon and light. I'll go with moon first. Moon is held by sun and minority. It's a direct subsidiary. Total number of shares in moon are 
1 lakh share capital, 10 rupees share, 10,000. Number of shares held by sun and moon is 8,000. 8,000 held by sun and moon. Total number of shares in moon is 10,000. Minority is 2,000. The percentage holding is 80-20. Indirect subsidiary is light, held by sun, moon and minority. Total number of shares, 60,000 share capital of 10 rupees each, 6,000. Number of shares held. 1800 by sun, 3600 by moon, 1800, 3600, balance is 600. This is 30, this is 60, this is 10. Analysis of reserves of subsidiary with respect to my date of acquisition. That is 1-7-2011. First always start with indirect subsidiary that is light limited. The balance on the date of acquisition are already given to you. So obviously the difference should be post acquisition. Reserves there is no change. So if you observe reserves as on 1st July 15,000 for light limited. Now come to the reserve in the balance sheet 30,000. So 15,000 is appropriated after the date of acquisition. That 15,000 is free. This 15,000 is post. I don't have to analyze that. <coughs> Directly start with your PL. Start with your PL. How much PL balance is there? PL balance is 40,000. Start with that. Balance as on 31st March 2012. Light limited balance in PL as on 31st March 2012 is 40,000. Out of 40,000, I'm splitting it into two parts. The first one is balance as on date of acquisition. 1st July 2011. On his date of acquisition in Light Limited, it is 25,000. This is profits after 1-7. Fifteen thousand. Check your adjustment. There are two adjustments. One in moon and one in light. In moon and light, both I have unrealized profits. In light, our problem number seven. So point number seven. Light sold goods to Moon Limited and equipment of twenty four thousand at a profit of twenty five percent on the selling price. 25% on selling price, one fourth on selling price is one third on cost. So if the cost is 24,000, one third on cost is 8,000 profit. But I can't take the entire 8,000 as unrealized profit. I have to reduce depreciation at the rate of 10%. When did it sell? 1st Jan 2012. That means 3 months depreciation at 10% per annum. So my unrealized profit Eight thousand minus eight thousand into ten percent into three by twelve.
3 months depreciation is 200. I guess this is 7,800. Oh, one second, guys. Yeah, there's 7,800. The balance is 7,200. This is pre-acquisition reserves. 7,200 is post-acquisition. Guys, though your acquisition is on 1st July, I'm not splitting the profits of the current year. Because I'm not given current year profits. I'm given only profits after 1-7-2011. I don't have to split that. Next, go to the analysis of Moon. Balance as on 31st March 2012. 50,000. Balance was on 1-7-2011. 1-7-2011 balance is for Moon Limited 20,000. My profits after 1-7 is 30,000. From this 30,000, I have an adjustment. That is unrealized profit on stock, 1000 rupees. 4000 stock sold for 5000. Unrealized profit on stock, 1000. You don't have to calculate anything, guys. He clearly said 4000 costing goods. Were appearing in the stock for 5000 rupees. The 1000 rupees is the unrealized profit. Now I have pre and post. Now you can distribute. Check the reserve for light limited. Light limited reserve as on 1st July is 15. Right, reserve, right limited reserve on 31st March is 30. So 15,000 is pre-acquisition, 15,000 is post-acquisition. PNL we just analyzed. Light limited 25,000 pre, 7,200 post. Total 40,000, 15,000, 7,200. Split between Sun, 30%, Moon, 60%, Moon, 60%, Minority, 10%. 30%, 12,000, 60%, 24,000, 10%, 4,000. This is 4,500, this is 9,000, and this is 1,500. 30%, 2,160, 
go for the distribution of moon maintain two columns again pre acquisition and post acquisition under post acquisition again two columns one is a reserve column and other one is pnl start with moon limited reserve then go for moon limited pnl which we already analyzed also add a share in post acquisition reserves of light come to reserves moon limited reserve in the balance sheet is given to you as 40 Moon limited balance as on 1st July is given to you as 25. So 25,000 is pre-acquisition. So 15,000 is post-acquisition. P&L we already analyzed. Come back to your P&L of Moon limited. 20,000 pre, 29,000 post. Share in post-acquisition reserves of light. Moon limited share in post acquisition reserves are light are nine thousand and thirteen twenty. Sorry, four three two zero. Add it up. Forty five thousand twenty four thousand thirty eight three twenty. Split. distribute to minority and sun limited sun 80% minority 20 and 9000 19200 4800 6640 6664 and 26 three working notes cost of control minority interest reserves for cbs close
Cost of control, I have three investments. Sun and moon, sun and light, moon and light. No dividend adjustment, guys. Investments are 90,000, 40,000 and 50,000. Share and net assets. Share capital and reacquisition reserves. Each share is 10 rupees. Sun in moon 8000 share. Share capital 80,000. Sun in light 1800 shares. 18,000, 3,600 shares, 36,000, pre-acquisition reserve, sun and moon, 36,000, sun and light, 12,000, moon and light, 24,000. You will get a capital reserve guys. 1,16,000, here you will get 10,000 rupees of goodwill, but again 10,000 rupees of capital is up. Capital reserve is 26,000 minus 10,000 plus 10,000. Total capital reserve in the balance sheet will be 26,000. Then go for your minority interest. Two columns again. In moon. Light. Represented by share and net assets as share capital and reserves. Under reserves, again we'll have pre-acquisition reserves and post-acquisition reserve. Under post-acquisition reserve, again I'll have a general reserve as well as p &L. That's it. Post amounts. Come on. Minority holds 2000 shares in moon, 600 shares in light. 2,000 shares, each share of 10 rupees, 20,000. 600 shares, each share of 10 rupees, 6,000. Reserves in moon, reserves in moon, check for the analysis and uh, distribution in moon. Pre-acquisition, 9,000. Post-acquisition, general reserve, 4,800 and 6,664. 4, sorry, 4,1500. And 720. Oh, for this we get 12,220. And uh, for moon we have 40,464. Total is 52,684. This is for CBS. There is no adjustment, guys. Reserve and PNL, that's it. First add is unlimited balance. Balance of reserves in unlimited. Reserve 50,000 and PNL is 60,000. 50,000, 60,000. Add is share in post acquisition reserves. Share 
share in post acquisition reserves of moon as well as light moon check in the distribution 19200 for general reserve 26656 for pnl 4500 for light general reserve 2160 for moon sorry pnl that's it guys, there's no adjustment regarding any other item here except for dividend. Last adjustment. Dividend proposed is 10% of share capital, 1,50,000. 15,000. Now strike totals. General reserve is 73,700. P&L is 73,816. 1,50,000 reserves and surplus start with capital reserve in cost of control 26,000 then go for your reserves for CBS reserve 73,700 and PNL 73,816 Then my minority interest on the liability side, 52,684. Non-current liability is nil. Current liabilities exist. 
the only current liability existing is creditors and the total of the creditors is 90,000. Check intercompany owings if any. Yep. No intercompany owings. So creditor is 90. And also proposed dividend. Finally we have proposed. Last item in your reserves for, sir, reserves for CBS. 15,000. Assets, non-current assets. Under non-current assets, we have tangible fixed assets. Under tangible fixed assets, in place the value, but you need to reduce 7,800 towards unrealized profits on a tangible fixed assets. So 70,000 plus 1,20 plus 1,3,000. The total is 2,93,000. 2,93,000 minus 7,800. This will give you 2,85,200. Investments will get cancelled. Automatically I will get. Okay. There is a capital reserve which is already written. It is not goodwill. That is it. I have current assets. The first current asset that I see there is stock should be reduced by 1000 rupees unrealized profit. Stock in trade is 40, 30 plus 20. The total is 91,000 down, 89,000. Next figure is my debtors. 20 plus 25 plus 30, that is 75. Cash 10, 10, 10, 30,000. Cash in transit. When we cancel the intercompany owings, I get cash in transit of 4,81,200 is the balance sheet total. Check. I will complete the problem guys. 